thank you guys for coming. So I I'm also in, in the of my, uh, my wife and my four kids. They give me the time to do this. Okay, so I want to say um, officially the uh, website launched. Today is the soft opening of findtheone.org. After nine months of grind, grinding, ups and downs, we're finally here. We have a website called findtheone.org, so everybody should register uh, for all singles. Again, we want, to make a, we want to make a website where there's less swiping and, less, and more closing. There's a lot of swiping going on and not enough closing going on, and I see the trends. So we want, to, we want conversions. At the end of the day, leads have to be converted. So again, this website is going to be based on on a mutual understanding that everybody's on the same game plan. That means it's a Torah-based lifestyle. Again, I tell girls all the time, they ask me, what, what, do you, what, do you, what should I look for in a guy? Number one, one of the number one things I say is self-control. Why? Because I get 10 phone calls every week about gambling addictions, about sex addictions, about all kinds of things that have nothing to do with self-control. And you, you're either going to pay the price now, or you're going to pay the price later. So you have to be careful what you look for. This is very, very serious. Because you have no idea. One thing is to be single, everybody's having fun. Next thing you know, you got two kids, your husband's a gambler, you got a big problem. You got a big problem. And I'm serious about this. You have no idea the amount. So that's why we try to educate. Now, how do we control a person not to have these, these impulses? By connecting to a higher purpose, which is God. That means if I'm happy with my soul state, I'm happy with Hashem, I'm happy who I am, I don't need dopamine from gambling, I don't need artificial dopamine everywhere else. But if I'm not happy with myself, if I'm not happy in, a, in, a, in living with my soul, then guess what? There's, there's going to be a hole there, and that hole has to be filled with aggression, addiction, depression. So this, is, this, this kind of stuff is very serious. It's not a joke. So that's why we try to, we want to have the website with self-control. We, we want to teach people, listen, you have to be on the same game plan because we want conversions. Once there's conversions, that's it. Once everybody's on the same page, everybody's good. Remember, there has to be an emotional touch. There's not an emotional touch. What, what do we have? What do we have? Then we're just like everybody else, then you're just a statistic. 60% of people, 50% get divorced. You're just a statistic. So I'm trying to get people, build the right vessel, build the right, become the right person, and you will attract the right person. So that's why these things are, these classes are, are all about the self. Working on yourself, because when you work on yourself, you attract better people. For every action, there's a reaction. Just like I would come into the room, I would say hello everybody, everybody would say hello back. Everything you do in life, there's an action and there's a reaction. The minute a person starts making actions by himself, guess what happens? There's a reaction for the positive or for the negative. That's, it's, that's why it's all in our court. At the end of the day, the Arizo says, if you're smiling down here, upstairs you're smiling. If you're not smiling down here, upstairs you're going to look for ways to find a person not to smile. So really, it's really in our core. So again, if we bang our head against the wall 10 times and we're complaining that our head hurts, that has nothing to do with Hashem. That has to do with us. Yes, you're going to get a headache. Stop banging your head against the wall. So that's what we do. So these, are, I, I, again, I hate to simplify things very easily, but this is, this is exactly the way. So what do we need to do? We need to control our focus every day. What are we focusing on every day? That's one thing you have to be careful is not to have broken focus. Because if you, don't have, if you have broken focus, guess what's going to happen? You're going to focus on the wrong things. And then those wrong things are going to lead you to X, Y, and Z. It's very important. So, today we're going to talk about prayer. We're going to talk about prayer and the connection between prayer and Shalom Bayit and Zivugim. You'd be surprised how much your prayer is connected to your soulmate and your Parnassah. You wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how, but Rabbi Nachman says, the quality of your prayer determines your quality of relationships. So, sometimes a person can have a rocky Shalom Bayit. It's to get a person to go and, and spend in prayer. If a person has a guy who's Torah, who, who is connected to the Torah, if he has a rough fight at home, you know what he's going to do? He's going to do his bodhidut. Hashem, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I did the wrong thing. Maybe it's always out of control. What do you think is going to happen if a guy is not connected to the Torah? You know what he's going to do? He's going to hit the first bar and talk to his friends how, how bad his wife is. That's what happens. <laughs> If we don't have a coping system connected to the Torah, which at the end of the day is, is the only thing we have, that's the only oxygen that's going to last forever, the other stuff is not going to last forever, this is the only thing you have. So we have to understand that usually an indication of my life where I've seen my Shalom Bayit a little off or my Parnas a little off, it was an indication that my prayer got a weak. 
my, I was a little, I was drifting away in prayer. So what happens? What, what happens when things go wrong? You got to turn up the heat. So what do we need to do? We need to turn up the heat. So we're going to give you a lot of information about this thing. So again, I don't know how many people pray here. I don't know how many people take prayer seriously. But if you take breath, if you say breast of one one, it's all about the connection to God. It's all about praising. It's all about having that relationship with God. Because in the event that we don't have a relationship with God, then we get we get one punch in the face, and there goes your spirituality. That's why you see so many people leave so quickly. Why do they leave so quickly? Because there's never there, there was never a real relationship there. If there's a relationship, you get you know. What do you do? You work on the relationship, right? Your, your, your relationship determines it based on communication. That means according how good your relationship is, how good your communication. We know the number one cause of divorces today is not lust, it's communication problems. Same thing. And the number one cause of people divorcing God is what? Communication issues. They don't understand. So, unfortunately, we are living in such a world with so much uncertainty that if we don't have this connection with God, you're going to... You're, you're going to they spend all day long worrying. And what does worry do? It disconnects us from God. So how do we reconnect through prayer? This is the cycle that we go through in life. If you have a lot of, if you have no Muna, then your worry is going to go up. If you have a Muna, your worry is going to go down. That's the way it works. That's, that, that's basically, there's no, I can give you so many pills, I can give you, I can take you to the best doctors, but if you believe life is a threat, then what do you think you're going to do? Anything that happens, oh my God, what's happening tomorrow? If you believe life is a challenge, that God's making you better, what are you going to do? Bring it on. So those, these, these belief systems really are, are really the key to, our, to my whole health. My whole health could be determined about my thinking. That's why I want to express to people that you're, you are who you are today because of your mind. It has nothing to do with Hashem. You either let Hashem in or you push Hashem out. Right? We have, all have issues in our lives. Either the problem brings us closer to God, then it's a good problem. That means that was the agent to bring us closer. If the problem brings us away from God, it's not such a good case. Because that means you didn't take it. That means the ego got involved. Remember, the ego blocks your perception in life. Because the ego can't handle a person having trouble. Well, how should I, why should I have trouble? How come it's happening to me? Why, why, am, I, why am I going all, all, Why is this always happening to me? So what do we do? We run away. So these, these are the things. There's nowhere to run. So... According, we know that prayer involves two things. We know that prayer involves praise. First, we have to praise God. And then we have to plead. We can't just come in like a dog. If your kid came in and said, Give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this, you would tell the kid, Absolutely, you're not getting nothing. You don't talk to me like that. First, you thank me. You appreciate what you have. But guess what? How can I, how can I know somebody? How can I know somebody, right? Without knowing who he is, right? We, to, the, to the amount that we know Hashem... How do we know Hashem? Through the Torah. That means if a person is not in learning the Torah or learning any kind of spirituality, there's no way he's even going to know what Hashem stands for. So obviously you can't praise. Does that make sense? If you don't know who you are, for example, if I have a neighbor and the neighbor brings my newspaper in, I start saying, wow, what a nice neighbor I have. Right? And next day, you know what he does? He brings it again. He, Wow, what a nice neighbor. What happens if I, I go, all of a sudden, I'm about to go to the airport, and I leave my passport, and my neighbor brings it to me? What are you going to say? Wow, what an unbelievable, this neighbor, I have the best neighbor in the world. So the more you get to know, the more you see, the more you get to know, the more you praise. So praise is based on a person knowing God. And we know the Gemara says that if a person turns his ear away from prayer, from, from Torah, what happens? You say, I'm not interested in this stuff. You know what, what God says? Then I'm not interested in your prayer. That's the way it works. Midah can I get midah. So, you want to get your prayers answered? You have to have a combination of Torah and tefillah. You have to have a combination. Because just like you said, Nah, I'd rather listen to this. I'm not interested in this Torah stuff. It's not for me. Okay, then when you come to pray, it's not for me also. That's what Hashem says. His prayer is despised. Hashem turns His ear away from His prayer. So we have to understand, life is measure for measure. That's the way it is. It's equal. So we have to understand, what am I listening to? How much time am I spending on knowing God? Because the more, the more I know God in my life, the more I know how the world works. I gave the class the other day on the, on the concept of a simsum, how a person has to go through failure before light, because that's the way the world was created. Just if you know that little line. Darkness before light. Wow, I get why my, I get why my marriage had to, I get why my zivug had to break up to find the right girl. 
Before I didn't understand it, why it happened to me. But now I got it, black and white. Oh, chaos before light. So to the, to the event that I know these things, then what happens? Then I know, I know Hashem. I know the way He's running the world. Or, to, I, or, or if I know that Hashem works with the 13 Midos of Rachamim, right? When Hashem revealed the 13 Midos of Rachamim to the world, right? He says, this is who I am. So how does a person get close to God? When He shows mercy to other people, because God has shown mercy to you, then you get mercy. So the more we know God, the more we praise Him. So it's very difficult for people to start praising God if they don't really know Him. Does that make sense? So we have to, what do we do? We have to spend time knowing Him. Because the more you let God into your life, the more you'll see how much He's looking out for you every single day, every single hour, every single minute. The less you see that, the more you block your perspective, the less you see God in your life. What am I going to praise Him for? What, He took a look at my mortgage, I'm not making any money, I can't find the zivug. What am I praising God for? You understand? What am I praising Him for? What's the, what, what's the point of praising? So first there has to be a praising and then there has to be a pleading. So, another way that we don't, we're not able to praise Him is again, if we have broken focus. If we wake up in the morning focusing on the garbage in our lives, then of course you're not going to praise Him. So how could you come to His bodhidud? Why is it so difficult to His bodhidud? Because you don't see the good in your life. So if you don't see the good in your life, it's going to be very hard because you're going to fake it. You're going to fake the prayer. So what do we need to do? We need to fix our focus before we fix our prayer. Remember, this is a relationship. So the, the, the stronger the relationship, the stronger the prayer. The weaker the relationship, the weaker the prayer. You can't fix one without the other. So that's why we, sometimes you have to go backwards. Maybe my focus is, my, maybe I have broken focus. Maybe I wake up with the wrong focus every day. Maybe I will focus on what's missing in my life instead of what's good with my life. Just that little focus can get you with a big smile in your face or a big frown in your face. Because you know what? Let me explain to you something about life. There's always going to be something wrong in your life. Always. It's going to be something. It's not this, it's not that. At all times, it's going to be a cycle of cycle of ups and downs and ups and downs. And this is life. So, if we're careful that we don't enjoy the good ups and we're just focusing on the downs, and there goes, there goes the, 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 the fantasy. And then, God forbid, we start going into the therapist and all that. So, the more we know Hashem, the more we plead. So, get to know Hashem. Because that will automatically get your prayer to a different level. Again, you have to get prayer to become, it's not a feeling prayer. I don't feel like it. I don't feel, everybody's into the feelings. It's a commitment. It's not a feeling. Got to get this feeling thing out of the way. You know, if you, everybody was based on feelings, you, a person would work out, he, he, would, he would never go to the gym. He, he, would, he would feel, eat what he wants. So we got to get the feelings sometimes out of the way. The number one issue that people tell me, I don't feel, I don't feel, I don't feel. I'm not asking you for your feelings. I'm asking you, what are you doing? The feeling is getting involved. The feeling is costing us money. Because you're never going to feel like doing anything usually that's good for you. you. We always hesitate. But when you want to go out to eat or you want to go to a heat game, oh, that's great. I feel great. Because you don't hesitate when you do that. You only hesitate when you do something like you have to do, it's good for you. We only hesitate to entertain ourselves, there's absolutely no hesitation. You never ask the guy, should I go, or should I not go? He goes right to the thing without any hesitation. Why? Because we have a habit of not hesitating. Okay? So that's one thing I want to explain to you about prayer. Prayer is a war. Rabbi Nachman says that our main prayer, our main weapon today is war. That's our weapon today. Is, I'm sorry, it's prayer. Why is it such a weapon? Because it involves us going against our ego. You know, you can listen to, a guy can learn all day, but when it comes to God, he's vulnerable. So it's much harder for him to pray. So, let's talk about the connection between the two things. First, I want to explain how your attitude towards prayer can make a big difference between whether you even have an opening or not. That's another thing I need to explain to people. You can't look at prayer as an obligation. You got to look at it as, a, as an opportunity. Anytime you put a low effort in your life, in absolutely anything in your life, it's because you're looking at it as an obligation, not as an opportunity. Just if I wake up in the morning, and oh my God, I have to do this. My energy is shut. So prayer is either giving you energy, or prayer is sucking your energy. Which one is it? If prayer is sucking your energy, then your attitude towards prayer is, it's an obligation. That's why it's becoming heavy for you. If it, you look at it as an opportunity, what do you do? I can't wait to build vessels. I can't wait. You know why? Because a guy that prays a lot, 
he's used to accustom to God answering his prayers. So what does he do? He gets right back up. But when you look at it as a burden, then automatically it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hamper you. So that's why he says in Lesson 24, Ramachan says that we, we, the only way we can connect to our soul level is through connecting to a mitzvot. Mitzvot, if you know mitzvot, is yud ke vav ke. That's how we connect. You really can't connect so much in yoga. Yoga is great. All these things are wonderful. You can become vegan. I'm, that's my, I'm, I'm not into the mitzvot so much. I hear people all the time. I'm not so much into the mitzvot, but I'm into yoga. I'm into spirit. I'm into hugging trees. That's wonderful. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm also a vegetarian. There's nothing wrong with that. But you can't, that's not going to fill your soul. It's not, you're going to get great friends. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of peaceful friends. But at the end of the day, it's not going to feed your soul. So this, this La La Land world um, is not really effective. Effective means connection. Connection means mitzvot. So we really can, oh, you know, I understand, oh, this guy's not cool enough to do it. But what, why is prayer? It's because it goes against your ego. Very important. So these things are already my attitude. Just my attitude towards, the mitzvot, towards prayer we can take it from a level one to a level five. Just my attitude. How I wake up in the morning. How I wake up. How, I re how, re how refreshed I am. My approach. That alone will bring me closer to God. Just like your, your son. Your son will come to you. He gives you a gift with a smile. You, 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 you give him so much more. But if he comes to you looking like Tisha B'Av, you don't want to deal with him. You don't want to see this guy. Because what happens when a person doesn't see his blessings? What, what comes out usually? A lot of complaints. You understand what happens? When you don't see blessings in your life and you're suffering from broken focus, that's going to be a new, a, a new, uh, a new addiction uh, that people are going to have. ADA, ADHD, broken focus syndrome, when you, when we, when we, which is a form of ingratitude. When we, when we suffer from broken, broken focus, what do we do? We're going to complain. We're going to complain. So, to the event that we have to realize, we have to go back to our soul state, that's to the event that God's with you. Because remember, the one, there's one character that God wants from you is the truth. That it means God is close to those who call Him out in truth. You could be down 99 nothing in the fourth quarter, but as long as you say, listen, I'm down 99 nothing in the fourth quarter, this is, this is what it is. God will help you. But if you pretend like you're not down 99 nothing, and you're acting like you're, you're up 100 zero with, with arrogance, then you don't get it. So remember, one, one thing that a person requires is truth. Part of the Hizbodidut that we talk about a lot is one thing you need to do. Just be honest. Don't pray for the 50th gate if your wife is uh, blitzing you on every down. Talk about your Shalom Bayit right now. Talk about what's bothering you right now. God doesn't want a fabricated prayer. He wants what's on your mind. That's the whole point. He wants what's on my mind right now. Is this on my mind? I don't know if I should marry this girl. I don't know if this girl's for me. I don't know if this person is that. I, I, I don't know if what's going to be with my business. He wants genuine. Number one thing, you want to attract God? You, it's that. And this is, how do we know this? From the Teva. Right? We don't know his ark. It says, God, go into the Teva. What does the Teva represent? The Teva, the same word for ark, means, means also word. That means, how do we get out of the floods? The floods is the, the, the flooding in our lives, the darkness in our lives. How do we, God says, go into the Teva. We know that the word the Teva had a, had a combination of God's name. Yud K represents 50, times Vav K represents 30. So the measurement of the flood is Hashem's name. So when a person is, is flooded in his life, God's commanding him, go into the ark. You're just like Noah. Go into the ark. What do you need to do? You need to connect to the Teva. The word has to live light. That means the first thing that has to go through is the speech. So the truth. First thing is attitude. How is my attitude? Number one. Second, truth. Truth has to come out. So these are the pre... I'm, I'm giving you the pre-game show before we get into this, these things. Because if we don't have the... If we go in with the, with the wrong attitude, if we go in like a burden, then you, this class is going to go from here to here. It's not going to really work. I always like to work backwards. I realize a lot of people give advice, but I realize they're not talking about how. They're not talking about the attitude. They're not talking about the details. That these little details could be so much... And, these, and that's why I specifically work on the details. The little, little details. A, a guy can come to a rabbi. Rabbi, I can't handle my life. Read Psalm 24. Here you go. That's going to help her life? Read Psalm 24 is going to help her life? She's got ingratefulness. She's not focusing on the right thing. She's complaining about life every day. Psalm 24 is going to help you? 
I think you need a little more than Psalm 24. I think you need a little more gratitude because you're not going to get approached in that prayer, in that kind of prayer. So remember, whatever action, there is a reaction. So the way I view the world, upstairs matches whatever I see. If I'm on 96.5, upstairs are 96.5. Things don't come with meaning. We give it meaning. Very important line. You realize that, right? What does this mean to me in this life? Is this failure the beginning of a new, a new day, the beginning of the light? Or is this going to be the ultimate darkness of my life? We don't, we don't give, we assign meaning to things. It's another thing very important, because based on your moon in your life, you're going to give things different meanings. I could have a relationship that breaks. What does that mean? It's not for me, Hashem. You must have something better for me. Or I could say, I'm a loser, I'm a nobody, I'm never going to get married again. Who gave that meaning? Same result, same incident. Who gave the meaning? You. So we have to realize we are the ones that are giving meanings. We are the ones that are causing the action and the reaction is based upon our deeds. So we have to look at the world obviously completely different. We have to look at the world as, as, as a guest in this world, like I always say. We have to look at this world like all the good things that are happening to us. I thank God I manage, I own three, four businesses. I have a lot going on. And if I can't tell you, if, I, if my focus is not on that day, I'm, it, there's no question I can have a bad day. And it's funny, I'm working out the other day and I see somebody on, on the, I see somebody on the treadmill. And you know what happens? She falls on her face. She falls on her face in the middle of the gym. I said, that's what happens to life. Life is running, but if you're not careful, you're going to fall on your face. I, I got a lot of deepness from that, from that incident. Obviously, I said, are you okay, everything? But that incident, this is life. Life is a treadmill. Life is a treadmill. But if you're not careful what you're focusing on, guess what happened to her? She fell right on her face. She hit her head. <laughs> I said, wow, big lesson. I had to see that. Anytime you see something in life, you're getting hints from it. So I realized that's, that's real, real life. And when we're not focusing on the right things, God forbid, that's what happens. We fall on our face. Okay, so lesson nine. Lesson nine, we're going to talk about lesson nine, lesson two. So according, why do I talk about prayer so much? Maybe other people don't talk about prayer so much. Because prayer is how you make vessels. What does that mean? How do I make vessels? When I pray for something, it first has to become a spiritual light and then it becomes a physical object. Okay? You pray for a car. It doesn't just, you know, how does, it, how does that happen? Correct? It starts as a spiritual light and it goes through a pipeline of, of the 10th sphere out and then it becomes a physical object. Now, if you have a, a bottleneck somewhere in the production of your pipe, what happens? Nothing's coming out. You understand? So we have to realize if there's a bottleneck, where am I holding that that bottleneck is holding? Where is that bottleneck effect? Where, why, is things, why are things not going through? So lesson 9 talks about, and he says, to, he says, prayer to God is your life. That's what Rabbi Nachman says. Prayer to God is your life. Whatever you have not achieved in this world, it's because you didn't pray for it or you didn't pray for it enough. That's what Rabbi Nachman says, black and white. He always focused, he always began with prayer, and then he, he walked on Torah. So he says here, when a person focuses on his words and he, and he uses his energy, remember, your energy, that means when a person prays with energy, what does energy mean, to be specific? It means con concentration on the words. Having a cell phone does not mean energy. That takes you out of way. That means if you're praying with a cell phone on there, you got, you're already, you got knocked out on the first one. You can't have energy when you're on a cell phone. How many synagogues we walk around, people are on their cell phones? Those prayers go nowhere. Okay? Second thing, pronunciation of the words audibly. It's very important that a person pronounces the words. If you pray, we have a breast of synagogue here, and if you pray with, with us, you'll see the amount of the noise in the prayer. You'll see how the noise, you'll see the, the vibe completely changes. Why is it so important? He says, because when we invest, any time that we have a a cloudy vision. What, what creates cloudiness? These obstructions, these confusions in our life. These are cloudy. These, these are clouds, right? When I'm worrying about something, what do you think happens when I worry? I'm, I'm exhausted. Correct? If you ask people, I said, why don't you pray for this? No, I'm too tired. I'm exhausted. What are you exhausted for? I'm w too worried to pray. So that creates a cloud, which creates a klipa, and it doesn't allow the voice to come out. So imagine walking around with a cloud over your head. So what do we need to do? 
when you have that, when you're in a funk, what do you need to do? You need to scream. You need to create thunder. Women have 10 measures of speech. 10 measures of speech came to the world. Nine of them came to women. I said, if you spend your mouth, if your potential, you know your mouth, your mouth is making vessels. Don't use your mouth for something else. Use it to make vessels. Don't use it to scream at your husband. Use it for vessels. Because when a person uses his, his, he actually uses the emotion. Remember, our emotion comes from our emotion. So when a person speaks with thunder, he creates thunder, you know what it does? It breaks the crookedness of the heart. That's why the Gemara says thunder was created only for one thing, to break the crookedness of the heart, to arouse people, to wake people up, right? You have to create your own thunder. How? You have to get emotional in the prayer. You have to want it. You have to have a little bit more desire. It can't just be ba 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 You have to plead with God what you want. It can't just be, uh, can't be like that. He says, by investing all your strength into prayer, your voice penetrates your mind, your mind and your heart experience the sound and the words of the prayer. This straightens out your crookedness of the heart. That's how you get, you want to get rid of the crookedness? You got to scream. You got to scream it out. That's why his bodhidut is so important, because you're by yourself. Nobody can hear you, so you can scream. You, that's where you should be screaming. I see people, the problems people have, you just don't want to get out of the problem enough. Because if you wanted to get out of the problem, you would have gotten out there. That's what that does for you. That's the power of prayer. And he says, this means you are able to answer all your questions of heresy. The Yetzirah has two things for us. It blocks our vision. We know there are two klipot. You know what klipot are? Klipot are, are external. I would say today, klipot, I would say today, is this ADHD stuff, or this, any, any kind, not ADHD, but not being able to be focused in life. Not focused. Oh, always, always wandering here, wandering there. Why am I not focused? It's because of these klipot. What are these klip, two klipot? They refer to Esav and Yishmael. Esav represents the guy saying, what's the purpose of prayer? It doesn't work. So sometimes we say, I tried yesterday, I tried the day before. Why should I pray now? So that's one of the klipot. Remember, the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, your ego, will tell you what's the purpose of prayer. He can't prevent the prayer from going up, but he can get you not to do it. He can put a story in your head, well, I don't have time to pray. I'm doing something else. But you have so many problems. I don't have time. Okay. So, that's the one. Yishmael says, oh, I prayed a long time ago. I don't need to pray again. He, God knows what I'm, God knows my thoughts in my heart. He knows my intentions. I said, you're a cardiac Jew? I'm asking you to speak. You can't just be a cardiac Jew. I'm a Jew in the heart. People tell me, I'm a Jew in the heart. No, 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 no. It has to come out in, in speech because the speech creates the vessels required to get the prayer answered. That's the key to victory. So these are the two klipot that create these clouds. That's why it's such a, a, it's such a war to pray. Why is it such a war? Because the Yetzirah knows that if a person started taking prayer seriously, he can battle every single one of his problems in his life. So you know what you have? The difference between a guy being in a Shalom Bayit argument for three hours and being 10 minutes is saying, I'm sorry. And you know what he does? He does 10 minutes of his Bodhidut on a Shalom Bayit. It's problem solved. Because the whole pro purpose of the problem was for you to humble yourself. Or the guy having a problem at work. Um, very, it looks like I'm trying to control the outcome of events a lot. It looks like I'm trying to, to be in the wrong business. That's Hashem's business. I need to be on my business. My business is prayer. Hashem's business is controlling when things happen. So if a person realizes that, and he realizes that, what am I doing? What am I trying to control the outcome of events? If you realize there's one common trend between anxious people, which I all the one, every, uh, maybe 99% of people with anxiety have the same issue. They all focus on things that they, they, they can't control. Number one, every time, I have anxiety, I have this, uh, can you control this? No, okay. Okay, exit your mind, enter the moment. That means you can't cure anxiety, so if you go to a doctor, the doctor tells you you have anxiety, you should take this. He doesn't tell you, by the way, you can't run God's world. That's his world. You, get a, you have to be in your own lane. That means your world. So you want to cure anxiety in, in, in two minutes? 
Focus on things you can control. That means your thoughts, speeches, and actions. Not things you can't control, like the outcome events, like what's going to happen tomorrow, like uh, is the customer going to go through the deal, like is this zivu going to work out? That I can't control that. I can put an effort, but I can't control the outcome of events. That's not it's not my business. So when once we get anxious, is we're losing control of life, and then what are we doing? We're we're, we're in the wrong business, and then how how can you come to God with anxious with anxiety? There's two things that Rav Nachman says, and even the Gemara says, that if a person has anxiety and depression, Hashem does not dwell with the person. So if He doesn't dwell with the person, of course you can't have prayer, because you're going to have this mental exhaustion. So that's, again, these are things that we need to understand. How much time do I focus in life on things I cannot control? If it's 100%, you're going to have 100% anxiety. If it's zero, you're going to have zero anxiety. That's the anxiety solution. That's why the number one cure for anxiety is trust. Now, you can go to all the psychics in the world, you can go to psychiatrists. Wonderful, that's great. They'll calm you down, they'll give you a couple of pills, but you still have to fix the underlying problem, which is you're in the wrong business. You're in the wrong business. You're trying to be a retailer, a manufacturer when you're a retailer. That's not, it's not your business. So if a person realizes every day and he's supposed to do, why am I upset today? Oh, very simple. My expectations were very high today. Who controls the outcome of events? Me or Hashem? Or Hashem? Let me, let, me be, let me turn my expectations into appreciation. Then there's no more anxiety. How do you like that one? There's no more anxiety. And the minute you turn your expectations into appreciations, you go from anxiety to gratitude in a blink of an eye. That's it. That's the whole segula for anxiety. But if we, we, need, we need major focus. That requires every single day checking yourself. Why did, what do I do? What happens on my good days? What happens on, on the days that are not so good? What happens on those days? Look what you do on those good days. Do more of that. What do you do on those days when you have anxious? Do less of that. That's his bow to do. That's, a, that's what we do on, on Yom Kippur. What do we do on Yom Kippur? We say, I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for that. So if, if we can just get to, to this focus on, 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 on get, letting Hashem rule your life, letting Hashem control your life, that alone could be, that you, you would have your head back. If you have your head back, you can conquer worlds. If you don't have your head back, what are you going to do? Also, God forbid, people went through trauma in their life. People went through major trauma. People went through divorces. People went through that. Can I control that? It happened. What, what, what's next? You understand? What can I do if I, if I focus on that? What's it going to give me? It's going to give me grief. It's gonna be, I'm going to be depressed. I'm going to be sad. I can't control that. Again, if Hashem willed it that that was supposed to happen to me, I can't control that. Again, shift your mind to something else. So then we can hit our head back because if, we're, if we have both states of anxiety and depression at all times, we cannot get Hashem to dwell with you. And in order for a prayer to get answered, you need one thing, Hashem to dwell with you. I know myself, when I am anxious, or I'm focusing on something else, or I lose my head, my concentration, I can't come up with a class. Can't do it. But I know that already. So what do I do? Right away, get out of that state. Get, me, get myself into a better mood. Realize I'm focusing on the wrong thing. And then all of a sudden, boom, the class comes to me. It's amazing. It's like it shuts, it shuts you off. That's exactly what happens. So worrying, what does worry do? It disconnects you. Prayer reconnects you. And the first thing to pray we have to do is to, we have to realize. Be, be honest. I can't control this. So anytime we go, from away, we go away from God, that equals pain. Anytime we go closer to God, that equals tikkun, that equals humility. Remember, think about our problems. Did these problems bring you closer to God, or did they bring you, or did they bring you farther away from God? That's an indication whether you handled your problems correctly. Ibn Nachman has a famous Torah, and he says, "How does it know? How does a person know if he handled his problems correctly?" You were given a, a specific challenge in your life, and we spoke about why you need challenges because without challenges you cannot have growth. Bottom line, you can't have growth. There's no growth without challenges. You can't run away from that. So that challenge that came to you, did it, did it lead to stopping a person stopping in prayer? Then that means that that challenge is going to turn into a din. Yes, it turns into judgment. We don't want that. So we want that same challenge to turn into, again, post-traumatic growth versus post-traumatic stress. 
What's the difference between both? One, you grew. One, you shut down. You shut down. So these are the trends that I see. So lesson nine talks about what's the connection between prayer and Parnassa and Zivug. Okay? We know that prayer, we have 12 windows in every synagogue. We usually have 12 windows in the synagogue because we have 12 lanes of prayer. What else connects to 12? 12 things, the Red Sea split in what? In 12 different ways. So we are all supposed to send our prayer through our right tribe. Everybody here is from a different tribe. Right? We all have a, a connection of prayer. Prayer represents a concept of splitting the Red Sea. Right? Which represents the number 12, which represents the 12 versions of prayer. So Rav Nachman says here that why is when, it, when the Jews, before the Jews did not, God did not split the Red Sea until the Jews cried out and screamed to split it. That means a person has a Red Sea in front of him. God is not going to split that Red Sea in front of him until he started crying, praying because they weren't worthy. The Midrash says that God made a stipulation with the Red Sea that it should only split the, to the Jews when they cross on their way. Still the Red Sea refused to split because you know what happens? They weren't worthy. So what happens? God only did this after they turned up their prayer, after they screamed. So we know the Gemara says that a person's livelihood and a person's soulmate as it, it's as difficult as splitting the Red Sea. So, every time we make a prayer, what are we making? Zivugim. We're making unions. That's what you're doing with, with prayer. One thing you do with prayer is you're making zivugim. You're making unions. You're connecting speech and, and thought together. According to the amount of zivugim that you make, is the amount of zivugim you get down here. What is a zivug? A business relationship, a, a marriage partner, shalom bayit, your parnasa, everything is determined, Rav Nachman says, on a person's quality of prayer. So, when a person has a problem, Rabbi Rush said to me, very simple, do his, do his bodhidut, do this. Everybody got the same recipe. Everybody with the same problem, because at the end of the day, it's a reflection of prayer. Now, what, all, what is prayer at the end of the day, guys? At the end of the day, what is prayer? Emuna. Prayer is emuna. Because I can't have emuna and not pray. Doesn't work. Impossible. You understand? If I believe in prayer, if I have a muna, then I have prayer. If I don't have prayer, what are you talking about? I have a muna. Look at my amuna book. Look, I have a garden of amuna in my, my book. That doesn't mean you have a muna. A muna means I believe that every single word I say can transcend nature. The Gemara says that prayer is in the summit of the universe, yet most people despise it. Can you imagine that? It's already telling you that it's on the summit of the universe, but most people, they despise it. They belittle it. Many things today, people belittle. Correct? But why is this connection so much? It's because this corresponds to the amount of zivugim. Okay? So the amount of a person's unions he's making, that union is making for him. So when I, when I tell people, how much should you pray for your soulmate to come? How much did you pray? Spend, stop looking for the right person. Become the right person. How? By praying. When you pray, automatically you attract the right person. Worrying, looking, swiping, wonderful. This is great. Like I said, I found my wife in 30 days. 30 days. Because I knew the formula. I knew the formula. This is what I need to do. This is what happens. And that's it. Finished. There's no, there's no other problems. Zero time worrying, zero time anything else. Because I know all the wars have to be done in prayer. If a person knows that, then he invests all his energy in the battlefront. If a person does not know that, he invests this in, in every other action like blaming, complaining, anxiety, uh, blaming other people, blaming the market, blaming whatever it is. You understand to the point? So we got to get focused. We got to get focused. What do I need to do? I need to pray. And he says here, because prayer corresponds to the 12 different versions. And the 12, and he says, according to the divine union a person brings about through his prayer, he, so in turn he's granted his marriage partner. Rabbi, R the Biala Rebbe told me one time that a person can exchange his marriage partner. Do you understand? You can get an upgrade. You can get an upgrade, believe it or not. <laughs> through prayer, believe it or not. You can get an upgrade. You can actually make, even if you're married, you can actually pray for somebody else, and you can see what, a, that's what I'm saying. The, the, every, anything but prayer, is a waste of time. It's a waste of time. That's the bottom line. Anything but prayer. And what do we say today? How much time do you spend prayer? 10 minutes. 
Do you understand why I go crazy about this? Because the formula is not the, the formula is not there. For, you don't have a formula for victory. If you don't even have a formula for victory, then you got to scream this. So clearly, you can change your marriage partner. I have seen this live. I've seen people, unbelievable how they got this, this person. What, what, what did you do differently? I asked some people, let me ask you a question. What do you do differently? How did you attract this person? You wouldn't believe how much time I spent prayer. All day long prayer, prayer, prayer. And until God had mercy and he has to answer your prayer. That's the power of it. But what do we do? We belittle it. We belittle it because why? Who knows why? Who knows why? Whatever is easy to do, it's easy not to do. You understand? It's very simple. Prayer means praying focused also in the Siddur in the morning and prayer mostly his Bodhidut. That will have a different class form. But we have to understand that if I can solve all my problems, that's why people tell me, um, I, can, I don't understand, just prayer can help me? Yeah, just prayer can help you. Is that not enough for you? What else do you need? Do you need a prescription for my rehab? What do you need? What can I get you? Can't you just go simply? Can't you? That's the way that God created the world like this. That means God did not give rain to the world until man prayed for it. What else do you want? How many more examples do you people want? That's why people have to understand. So he's saying here, but what happens first? There's klipot. These klipot surround him. They surround him. They, they, they see a person, God forbid. I was in tremendous darkness in my life at one time. Tremendous, tremendous darkness. So the darkness prevents a person from getting closer to him. So how is a person supposed to get out of any darkness? Very simple. Connect to the truth. As it says here, the Pasuk is, God is my light and God is my help. If you just say that mantra, forget these other mantras at the yoga studios. Mm, um, mm. Don't say this. This is not going to get you nowhere. I, what mantra should I use? Very simple. God is my light and God is my help. If you just say those, four, those three, four words, that's enough for you. God is my light. That means light is from God and, and God is truth. So, to the extent that I got to say, how can I be looking for my soulmate if I'm not even in my soul state? I have nowhere to, I have nothing to do with my soul and I'm sitting there looking for a soulmate. <laughs> That's not true. So get into your soul state. Get rid of the garbage and get into your soul state and then you can attract your soulmate. That's not true. So when a person, you can't say, God, I want my soulmate, but you have nothing to do with your soul. That's not true. Right? So that, that prayer has no light. Just because you see a bumper sticker, soulmate, that doesn't mean you're going to get your soulmate. That means I have to connect to my soul. What is connecting my soul? Mitzvot. Not just yoga, not just, but look at the trends. Look what's going on. The, the, the evidence is there, guys. I don't even have to invent this stuff. Look at the trends. I want to cure my addiction. I want to get to my soul. Get into your soul state. Everything has to be in your soul state. We have to understand that. And that requires prayer, that requires learning, that requires connections to Hashem. I'm not asking anybody to be a fanatic, I'm just telling you to, to have a connection. Have a, that's the only way. And he says here, because a person, the problem is that a person is caught up in the darkness and he does not know how to find an opening. The opening is like a person is stuck in the ark. And the minute a person starts saying the truth, the minute a person says, you know what, I need help. I'm wrong. I need help. I need counseling. I, you know what, I need help. That, there it goes. There's the opening. It's not, people think, oh my God, how can I start now? No. That means you haven't seen any, any light. The, but the minute you see a little light, you, it's going to pierce through the clouds. Just like that. That's the, that's the hope that people should have. They shouldn't think, God forgot about me. God doesn't love me. God loves everybody. But you keep on banging your head against the wall. Keep on banging your head against the wall. Remember, people only do desperate things in desperate states. When do they turn desperate? When they lose hope. Why do they lose hope? Because they don't have a Muna. Why don't they have a Muna? Because they don't get, they don't know Hashem. And they're too much in this world. So to the degree that we lose hope, we're going to do desperate things and desperate measures. Rabbi Nathan says all the time, why do I speak so much about depression? It's because one wrong turn, you're going to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I have, I have friends of mine personally. They are giving alimony to kids in Colombia, to kids in Greece, just because they made a couple of mistakes. Just because their whole lives, they, got a, they don't have the American alimony payment. They have life alimony payment. One little mistake they made. Why did you make that mistake? You were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Because again, we, we don't want to lose hope. We don't want to lose control. It's very important. 
So like he says here, God is near to those who call him in truth. And God is, it will enlighten the person. He's telling you guaranteed. You will be light, enlightened right away. The minute you say I need help, he will show you and he will escort you where to get the help from. That's how it happens. It doesn't happen any other way but saying the truth. But really saying the truth. Like not faking it. Like not trying to say, you know, I'm dating these girls and I want to find my soulmate, but when, when, I, when I dump them, then I'll find her. That's not the truth. That's a lust. That's not honest. You're not going to find nobody there. Right? We, know, we both know that. We can't go on a diet when we have cheese doodle and, and a bag of chips on us when we're eating. That's not, you're not, you're not honest. You're not truthful to yourself. Remember, we have to understand something. To the extent that we, that we, we put in an effort in life to deal with short-term pain, over long-term pleasure, okay, is to the, according to a person who loves himself. That means you are not going to put an effort into somebody you don't like. Remember that. If you don't like the person, would you put an effort in that person? So, why would I do all this if I don't like me? Think about it. It's a very, very deep concept. Why would I spend all this time, prayer, his body do, learning, blah, 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 if I don't like myself? So the beginning has to be Finding the good points in yourself, even if you're in darkness, you have to say, I'm in darkness, it's okay. God is my light, God is my truth. I'm out of it tomorrow. How? You make a decision to go, to go all in and start and divorce the story and marry the truth. That's what I tell people. Get a divorce from that story and marry the truth. When you marry the truth, all of a sudden, God opens up wall doors for you. Doors for you. And he also says here in this lesson that this is exactly how a person. He says here, now prayer also corresponds to miracles, because what? Miracles are also supernatural. Sometimes the natural order necessitates one thing, whereas prayer can override nature. Prayer overrides nature. That's what he's saying here. And the concept of nature is, and why is it overriding nature? Because you know what happens? When a person prays, a person gets rain. Without rain, there's no vegetation. What, what makes the activation for rain? Amuna. And Muna is the activation for rain. That means if I have a beautiful garden, but there's no rain coming down because I don't have a Muna. The Amuna activates the prayer, the prayer activates the rain, and the rain makes things grow. Same thing in our businesses. I need something, turn it into prayer. There's no time for worrying, there's no time for nonsense. Anything in a person's life, if he's not spending 100% of the time on a solution, He's making adjustments. That means, this is my, my, my business is down 20%. Make an adjustment, get, it, get turned to prayer. <clears throat> not, 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 we, don't, we don't sit there and, and, and get anxiety over these things. Now, one more Torah we'll, we'll say. So again, the 12, according to a person has a Red Sea in front of them, we all have a Red Sea in front of us, and according to the amount of how you're gonna cry out, and how focused the person is on prayer, that's that Red Sea that's gonna split in you. Remember, get used to splitting Red Seas. They're coming to you. They're going to come in all aspects of our life. But you know what we need to do? We need to push. 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 That's why. It's all about consistency. I realized the days that sometimes I was so out of it to pray. No mood. Not in the mood to pray. The day I got up, I, I mustered. You know what happened? That's the day the thing came through. It's the days that you don't feel like it. Because right before you're getting really, really close to the light, you know what happens? You get really, really blitzed. Because the Yetzirah knows he just needs one more prayer. Moshe Rabbeinu had 515 prayer. If he would have prayed one more time, but God told him, stop praying, because he had to answer the prayer. So that's what we have to understand. We have to understand that we don't follow the rest of the world here. We don't follow, we don't follow just because this guy is not praying, just because, that has nothing to do with me. I am connected to God, that's what God wants, that's why I pray. That's why if you see, if you see most synagogues, unfortunately, what time is the prayer over? What time does it begin? And what time is it over? That's the thing that they, don't forget, that that's the thing they waste no time on it. They want to run through it, and that's the time that they're building, they're building vessels. Does that make any sense? So you know what I realized, thank God, I was born in Colombia, I came with an open mind, I don't copy anybody else, I do my own thing. And you know what? I go all in in the books, and that's why Baruch Hashem, I have a lot of results in my life. Because I don't, I don't copy people. Just because somebody's doing it wrong, doesn't mean you should be doing it wrong. So that's why if you go to the Breast of Center, I invite you guys one time, go to the Breast of Center, and you see the difference between prayer.
So there's one more, one more speech, one more class we're going to do on this. So lesson 73 talks about there's this vessel called Ani. Okay? Aleph, Nun, Yud. Okay? Very important concept. Know these three letters. Aleph, Nun, Yud. We all get the Aleph. Aleph represents a person, he's a tzaddik. You're born a Jew, you get the Aleph automatically. Now what do we need, he says here, a person, if a person connects, let's see, there's a vessel called Ani. Ani also has the same gematria, the same numerical value as the word Kli. Does anybody know what the Kli means? Kli means vessel. This is, remember vessels, I talk about, about vessels. A lot of vessels. That's what we need. The vessel holds the light, correct? Kli and Ani has the same numerical value of 61. The word Ani, how do I complete a vessel? How do I complete this vessel? It's very simple. It says, the vessel is known Ani, this is the one where bounty gets to send. That means there's no Shefa otherwise than a, than a vessel called Ani. The bounty then descends, and how do I make this? What does the Nun stand for? The Nun stands for my mouth. The Yud stands for my thoughts. My mind and my mouth have to be in the same line. If I do that, I make a vessel. If I'm thinking here and my mouth is there, that means if you're in prayer and you're drifting away, God knows where you are, you're in the middle of Tahiti and you're in the middle of uh, Aventura praying, nothing's happening there. So we need to understand, when we come to prayer, this is the time for war. When it's a time for war, what do you need to do? You need to prepare yourself. Focus. Get your phone out of the way. Realize that your wars are right there, and then what happens? Vessels are made, and bounty descends, and then God, look what he says here, and then God gets happy when he gives you. He's happy to give. He, there's nothing more that God wants to do than give bounty to a person. That's what he does. So again, it's up to us. We need to, this class, the whole point of this class is start taking prayer seriously. You can only go to a certain level spiritually if you don't work with this. Because prayer develops your potential, your potential to actual. Without prayer, you, you can never get that potential to actual. All right? That's today's class. Thank you.